Okay guys, let's do an update. I know it's been a while. It's been a quite a while. Uh, I've been through a lot of changes in my life lately, so and I've been kind of busy and trying to keep busy. So for this update, um, these are the T5s, and I'll show you. Purple, pink, orange, pink. Mostly Geisman, Superflora, pink, two of them, and uh, ATI. Mm, ATI Purple Plus, Actinic, <coughs> excuse me, and the, um, what's the other one? Uh, the other one is a Sylvania, I think. Yeah, it's a Sylvania. It's a 3000K orange bulb. So, and I'll show you once again real quick. Purple and pink. Pink and orange. both all four so all right so i've been running these t5s for a while and uh as you can probably see the scape has changed a lot i still have the dwarf hair grass mini in the front and um when my co2 ran out for about a week and a half i lost a lot of stem plants and more sensitive things i lost some area colons i do have some blood vomits left here but as you can see, we don't know if they're going to make it or not. I sold most of my flamingos. I sold two big batches of them, so I just have babies left. So we're going to grow those back. And anyways, so Crypt Nuri, Crypt Hendricky. Very neat plant. Um, Crypt Nuri Rosen Maiden. Another very neat plant. And um, just some mostly buce in here. So I ripped out most of the backscape. And uh, I mean, I ripped a lot of things out, but I tore out most of the stem stuff, most of the things that I had growing in there. And yanked out like the whole left side was Aromatica before, back here. And I had some Rotala Mexicana Araguaya and some uh, Mexicana Red. The Mexicana Red has died back. I got rid of it. The Mexicana Araguaya is doing great. You can see some Rotala Walichi and Maca Red mixed. The other, the other Mayaka plant that I bought that I had just sitting in the front forever that was orange, uh, I, I think it's all just wasting away. So I'm probably just gonna take the some some of this and just propagate and multiply the Maca Red in here. So as you can see. I kept a bunch of these guys. I really love these. Alternanthera Ossipus. Kind of like a Rhinicky cousin. And I still I do have one crypt back here that you can't see very well. And uh, maybe I should find a better spot for it, but it's a Albita Castata. So you can see most of this scape is still just buce. A lot of it's lost color because over time because when I put these T5 after the CO2 ran out first of all I lost some color in a lot of things and some plants died my TDS went up I had a lot of die back and melt and uh, it affected a lot of things but after a million water changes and a lot of uprooting and a lot of maintenance um, we're growing things back but we're doing things different this time in the back here you can see the only main like stems that I have are grandulosas. These are Ludwigia grandulosas or peruensis, some people call them. That's going to be the back side back here. And then back here, the Altenanthera ossipus. And then we have the mostly maca red with a couple of stems mixed in of uh, Rutala walichi, which um, honestly you can't tell the difference when they're both growing next to each other. So I just mix them, but they're both pretty. Maca reds are eh, slightly more pinkish a little bit sometimes. So I'm probably going to replace this patch with more of those and keep the Araguaya going further back. So mostly right here, mostly, uh, let's say, Bulbitis hudori. I think it's called hudori, the big Bulbitis. I have mostly Bulbitis here with a little bit of some Christmas moss and Taiwan moss. And then um, I decided to just keep this 
plain Java fern. I really like it. Over here we have some more different types, uh, Mini Catherine, and I've got some Anubias variegated and Anubias golden next to it, golden nana. So, and then I have more abuse types than I can really name. I have a lot of different Malawi, and um, I have uh, oh, what's that one called? Oh, I forget, Senegua, Sengua. And then most of this over here in this area. Um, a lot of different, I have brownie purple, deep purple, a lot of things like that. But, you know, most of them are really mixed. I do have some Luna. But the Luna is hard to see down here hiding under the crypt. I got some more Luna and um, my friend gave me a bunch of Luna and it was melted completely. And it grew back and I have some floating in the other tank. And um, so, but anyways, this is the T5s. But... I feel like the T5 is just a little bit slightly underpowered, so I'm going to pause this here. And I have put the uh, SB Reef back. And I'm running the SB Reef, and I'm only running it at a low power of 50 blue and, say, 25 red. 50 blue and 25 red. So let me pause this, and I'm going to switch them back. And... I will show you the T5s versus the SB Reef. Keep in mind the SB Reef is going to be 50% blue on the blue channel and only 25% on the red channel because I like the blue more than red, even though it turns out really purple. And once again, if you're wondering about the background, it is a white poster board. And where it was a trifold, I just tacked it to the wall here at the wall and it leans forward so the top of it touches the tank and the bottom of it backs away from the tank so that's what the background is a lot of people ask me about this background and with this background and the way that it is this little LED down here at night lights it up as a kind of a bluish purple for night light effect so let me pause this and switch it back and I will show you the SB Reef. First let me turn this on so you can see the difference at pause. T5s. And SB Reef. So you can see the difference probably pretty clearly since I just switched it from one to the other. Um, maybe it looks a little bit wider, a little bit less. A little less evening and a little more morning but since I have since I know what my settings are here I've got 50 blue 25 red I will show you so we have blue channel looks very purple red channel looks warm kind of orange so with both 50% of the blue and 25% on the red dial we have this right here so this is what I'm going to be running for a while the reason I'm running them at lower power is because I know that this light is always brighter than what we think it looks like so you can put this to 100 100 and think oh well that looks nice and then grow algae farm because I mean it's just brighter than it looks like so you see I lose a little bit I lose a slight little bit of color on some things, but it basically just takes a little while for the eyes to get used to. This guy's less red. With the T5s, I had a lot more red because of all the, the pink and the orange bulbs, and then the purple really illuminated all the kind of the blue and purpley pinks. So, um, another big thing that I did in here was, and you guys know that. You guys know that moss that I had that was like completely covered and wrapped around the wood? I ripped all of that completely off and scrubbed it off with a toothbrush. Some of it's growing back. It'll do that. Sooner or later, it will grow back. If you ever take moss and completely cover it on a rock or anything, you can scrub it off with a toothbrush. You can do anything you want to do, but if you, it will grow back. It would just slightly spider its way back in. And 
if you don't want it creeping back the way you do that is by spot killing it with XL and a syringe but I don't really feel like doing all that so we'll just see what grows in and how it grows and um, I don't know that's basically it this side here I moved these two crypts to here I cleared out this area more flow more room this piece of wood right here my kid found for me on a vacation in New York and he brought it home to me and I stripped the bark off of it and I pulled a piece off the end and it it's a pretty nice piece of wood really nice so it kind of looks like this from the side so um, I got it really high up rested on the rocks so that when the grandilosas and stuff fill in they can kind of bloom up to the back and build height I wasn't really completely literally going for another V shape, but that seems to be kind of my thing is the V. So from the direct front, I got a little reflection going on from behind me, but if I tone the brightness down a little bit, here's kind of a clear picture of what it looks like. All the uprooting and stuff that I did really messed things up for me because as I said before, all of this is cat litter and then there's sand on top. Every time I uproot it, it brings up cat litter. So if you can see, there's, you can see the kitty litter across here. You can see pieces of kitty litter everywhere and they keep rolling down this hill to the front. So I have pieces of kitty litter everywhere. Luckily they kind of blend. But what I do is as the kitty litter rolls downhill and as it comes forward, I just keep siphoning and siphoning it out with a little small bucket and a regular siphon. So I'm trying to get rid of, uh, little by little, trying to get rid of the extra pieces that come out. I'm waiting for these crypts to grow back. I know they look kind of sad right now, but you can see the new leaves do have some pretty nice color. They do still look good. It just... In the bigger picture they don't look that great but they look better than they actually look on camera so that's about it trying to go for something more basic and back here probably just going to keep the walichis back here and i love walichis but they grow so well that i can just go put a few um i can put a few either immersed outside or i can put some floating in the other tank or something for a while and if i change my mind i can put them back but i thought about doing just all crypts in the back but I really love these octopus, so I'm going to keep them there and pull this patch out. Either put, either just put crypts here or maybe more of these or something similar. Maybe more grandilosas, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to do something and not, I'm trying to knock it off with all the stems and stuff. It seems like this setup here without aquasol doesn't do so hot with the stems and everything in the long run because without aquasol, in the long run I've kind of like got higher pH and KH values and but this shows what can be done my regular tap water is 7.4 to 7.6 or something and then between that and my regular KH that's not low um, all these guys are happy uh, my CO2 is turned down it's like maybe two three bubbles per second and um, so it's all sand and cat litter I do take um, little gel caps that have Osmocote in them that I ordered, the Osmocote Plus from uh, eBay. I take those capsules and I dump most of it out and leave just a few little pieces of Osmocote in each one. And I do plug like maybe one here and one here. I'll go under a big massive crypt and plug one around there somewhere. And where I have a massive stems, I may plug one there and one there. And um, like for the crypts and stuff like that. So they do have a little extra nutrition to feed from I had a very very small layer of um, garden potting soil underneath it all but I mean I think it's been used up it's been a long time because that was way down in here somewhere so that's it also I took my skim inflow and put it back there instead of in the front this time I didn't think I could do it before because the back was sloped so high, but doing pretty good. General update. So just kind of a walk around and what we're looking at here, 
And when you're sitting on the couch, it looks great. All right, that's it. Signing out. SB Reef is back, and we'll see how it goes. And hopefully, I don't get a lot of algae. I don't know how bright it is compared to the other. I do not own a par meter. So, we'll see how it goes. Everything looks good.